Hi, I'm Chris Howard. Welcome to Top of Mind. It's been a really busy time. I've been out on the road for weeks at our own events and talking to clients and people and vendors and all different types of folks about what they're doing. And especially AI, because AI continues to be very dominant. But of course, what's happening is we're continuing to implement AI and seeking value from AI. And what we've been doing at Gartner is trying to find some frameworks for people that can help them understand and manage the complexity of this implementation. And so that's much of what the messaging at our IT symposium event was. And I wanted to give you my take on a couple of the key messages there. One is that there are multiple AI races taking place. There's a race that the vendors are in, so the suppliers of AI technology, and it's a race towards innovation. But there's also a race for people that are trying to apply AI and to use it to create value. And they're different races. And the truth is that you may be in one or the other, but you're not in both because both is exhausting. And so if you are a vendor or a supplier of AI technology, you're innovating at the pace that you need to innovate in order to, 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 you know, to be competitive and to bring new things to market. But in that race as a vendor, you actually need to be really careful about your scope. Am I trying to provide very horizontal functionality or is it something very niche? And we'll have more to say that in the weeks to come. But the race that end users, you think of the users of technology are in, they can't be in the same race. You have to choose your pace. And it might be an AI steady pace. So you're sort of implementing, you're being careful and you're figuring out what works. Or you could be at an AI accelerated pace because you actually are using it for your own competitive advantage. So there are two races, a vendor race and an end user race. And you need to choose which one you're in and also choose the pace within that race itself. Now that you're in an AI race, you also need to have the right equipment for this race. And this is what's really starting to flesh out as we're covering these technologies, these markets, these capabilities. And what we've done is create something that we've called the AI technology sandwich. And it's kind of a bit tongue in cheek, but it's really built on the idea of a stack. What are the sets of capabilities that need to fit together? Because what you're experiencing, of course, is that AI is coming from everywhere. It's coming from inside, it's coming from outside, it may be coming from your business partners, it's certainly coming from your technology partners, it's just coming from everywhere. The risk of that, that kind of chaos, is an entropy where there's a lot of stuff happening, but it's not always easy to convert it into work, convert it into value. So we've come up with a concept of this technology sandwich to help you make some sense of it. So at the bottom of the sandwich, you have things that you're familiar with. You have data, so you have an infrastructure. You have capabilities where you're maybe building software or you're blending different AI techniques and so on, and then providing those out to the enterprise. But there's also a lot of technology, data, AI coming from outside. And so think about bring your own AI. It may be that there's you know, a specific technology that I want to use in my job or in my function, and I'm bringing that and actually using it, say, to create marketing copy or to do something specific in a finance function. You know, there are all kinds of these things. The other thing that's happening is you're getting AI coming embedded in software that you're purchasing or maybe already have. So we're seeing definitely AI embedded, for example, in ERP systems or in CRM systems, all of the types of typical enterprise applications that we use, AI is coming from there too. There's also more and more data coming from outside that you may want to feed into your environment in order to make decisions. So, and, and all of this really is about augmenting the ability to make decisions based on tons of complex data and patterns that are in your environment. So you have data coming from outside. You have people bringing their own AI into that environment. You have embedded AI coming from the vendors themselves. And then down underneath, your IT staff is also building AI applications, consuming data, building data fabrics, and so on. So you have this sandwich kind of starting to come together, which is a bit symmetrical. So things at the bottom look similar to things at the top. But there's a really important part in the middle, kind of the heart of this, which is the layer that we call the TRISM layer, which stands for trust, risk, and security management. Trust, risk, and security management. And this is the, the, the set of technologies and also processes and methodologies that you use to govern 
this incoming set of data and these AI capabilities. And it's a mix of human processes. So governance, so choosing what you're going to do, choosing how algorithms will make decisions, sort of what the boundaries are around how AI will be used in your environment. But also there's this emerging set of technologies that enable you, enable you to mechanize security and risk management in the environment. So for example, you may actually have systems that are checking the output of generative AI systems to make sure that they are compliant, you know, that they're not speaking bad language or they're not giving bad advice. And there's a whole set of emerging innovation happening in that space. It may be that you have technologies that are assuring compliance with regulation and policy. Uh, but generally, these are techniques that are keeping you safe as you incorporate more and more of these technologies. So you have a tech sandwich, data on the top and the bottom, you have AI coming from the top and the bottom, and then you have TRISM or governance and security mechanisms, mechanisms in the center. Now, depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your AI implementation, your tech sandwich will have different sizes. And it may be that so you're, if you're a small or a mid-sized company, you're actually going to absorb more of this from your vendor partners and you're not going to build as much on your own. So you'll have a tech sandwich that maybe doesn't have as much built on the bottom. Uh, if you're in a highly regulated environment or maybe you're a government entity, you're likely to have a lot more focus on that TRISM layer in the center because you're having to enforce policies, you're having to make sure that what you're doing is actually compliant. Now, if you're a large or progressive organization, you're going to want to have all of this. You're going to have high customization capabilities in the bottom. You're going to want to be able to absorb and plug in different capabilities coming from everywhere. And so you need high flexibility in this. Now, what Gartner is going to be doing over the coming months, of course, is giving you a market view. So who are the players that actually are at different layers in, in this tech sandwich? And, and assessing those using things like what we're calling the emerging market quadrant, the EMQs, which we're going to be updating very frequently because this market is changing very quickly. We're going to try to help you make decisions about which pieces of this sandwich to activate based on what you're trying to do, because it's all about outcomes. So to recap, there are a couple of races going on. There's a vendor race and then there's an end user race, which is seeking outcomes. When you're in a race, you require equipment. And in this case, this is what the tech sandwich is. It's the equipment that you're going to use to actually achieve the results in the race that you're in. There are other implications that we'll talk about in more depth as we go on through the next several weeks. Clearly, people have to be involved in bringing this to life. And more and more what's happening in the implementation of AI is that AI is becoming a part of the team. It really is becoming a team member. And so you're inserting machine capabilities into the operating model, which changes the nature of work itself. And there's some interesting and maybe odd reactions that people have beyond sort of the initial fear of losing jobs, which tends to be where people start. The reality is more nuanced than that. So we'll be talking more about how people and machines work together to accomplish uh, results and really understanding the psychology of that relationship. And then, of course, all of this aimed at creating business value, which will have its own set of top of mind and other videos that we're going to create to help you understand how to create value from all of the things that I'm talking about. So my advice to you, uh, choose the race that you're in, choose the pace that you need to accomplish the goals that you have, and then think about what are the ingredients in your tech sandwich, your AI tech sandwich to make that work, and then use this with your vendors to understand the capabilities that they bring to help you accomplish the goals that you have. Thanks for joining. I'm Chris Howard. This has been Top of Mind, and we'll see you next time.